All right, guys, back again with another sermon. The name of this sermon is going to be called Coming to a Merry Cuz. <laughs> Coming to a Merry Cuz. And if you say that fast, it's coming to America's. And that probably sounds very familiar to some of you. It's because I based the, the title of this sermon off of the name of an old movie, one of my favorite movies called Coming to America, starring Eddie Murphy. And if you've seen that movie, it probably makes sense now why I'm dressed up the way, I, the way that I am with the fancy red vest and the gold crown, this paper crown that I got on my head, looking like a king. Now, now it's starting to make sense, but if you don't get it, if you... Don't, you, you, you don't know the movie, you haven't seen it, you haven't heard of it, don't worry, I'm going to explain it because it's going to help me make this sermon make sense. So, coming to a merry cuz, and I'll explain why I broke America down like that to a merry cuz here later. So just bear with me, I'm going to tie this all together. This is going to be a quick, simple word for somebody or some people. Uh, if you're following along in scripture, go to Luke chapter 20. And it's just one area of scripture to look at. And as you're turning there, Luke chapter 20 verse 19 is where we'll be starting. Let me just kind of explain what this word is about. Whoever this is for. This is for somebody who is believing God for marriage. But listen, this isn't for somebody who just recently decided, you know, okay, you know, I, I think I'm ready to settle down, blah, blah, blah. No, this is for somebody who you've already been seeking God about this. Maybe you've received some confirmation and you're at a point now where you know God has been preparing you. So this isn't just some recent thing. Whoever this is for, you know God has been dealing with you, dealing with your heart on some matters. You know God has been working on you in some matters. Maybe he's been doing what I call the mirror thing where he, he causes you to look at yourself. He shows you you. He shows you the good, the bad, and the ugly within you. You start to analyze yourself. Not that you put yourself down or that he wants you to see yourself in a negative light, but rather God wants to show you areas where you could improve something that will make you a better you and also in turn make you a better spouse. So, you know, you know that God's been working on you. He's been working through you. He's been preparing you. You've been patient. You've been waiting and you know God is going to answer your prayers and you're just patiently waiting. And with that said, if that's you, this word could be for you. And all I'm simply letting you know in this word is that your time is coming, but listen, the, the thing here, the thing that I'm really trying to nail home for you is making sure that you pay attention to how people, certain people are treating you right now. Pay attention now, and I'm sure you have, whoever this is for, I'm sure you've been noticing some things, but really pay attention right now as to how people are treating you because it's key for you to pick the right one. What do I mean by pick the right one? You may be saying, well, if, if God has the one for me, you know, I'll know that it's the one. Yeah, but there will be temptation to pick the wrong one. What do I mean? Hold on, hold, hold tight, hold tight, hold tight. We're going to get into it. Luke chapter 20 now this particular story that i'm going to read it's actually the story that i read in the last sermon that i did called nachos and caesar salads <laughs> but i'm reading it from a different text a different book because in the gospels matthew mark luke and john sometimes they share same some of the same stories but sometimes they may you know uh, uh add or, or or leave in or, or not have certain details as it would in a different book. So just to mix it up, same story, but instead of reading it from Matthew like I did last sermon, I'll read it from Luke, just, just mixing it up a bit. So Luke chapter 20, starting at verse 19, it says, And the chief priests and the scribes the same hour sought to lay hands on him, 
and they feared the people, for they perceived that he had spoken this parable against them. And they watched him and sent forth spies, which should feign themselves just men, that they may take hold of his word, so that they might deliver him unto the power and authority of the governor. And they asked him, saying, Master, we know that thou sayest and teachest rightly, neither accept thou the person of any, but teachest the way of God truly. Is it lawful for us to give tribute unto Caesar or no? But he perceived their craftiness and said unto them, Why tempt ye me? Show me a penny, whose image and superscription hath it? They answered and said, Caesar's. And he said unto them, Render therefore unto Caesar the things which be Caesar's, and unto God the things which be God's. And they could not take hold of his words before the people, and they marveled at his answer and held their peace. We know that there were people who were always badgering Jesus, questioning him, trying to get under his skin, press his buttons, cause him to get out of character. So they had issues with Jesus. They had issues with what he taught. They had issues with his inclusiveness. He wanted uh, the whosoevers, as I say, those who were, were willing to receive Jesus as their Lord and Savior, but those who were willing to believe on God and be grafted in, so to speak, with the Jews. They didn't have to become Jews, but they would become grafted in with them. The Gentiles and the Jews coming together to all serve the one true living God. And there were people that just didn't like what Jesus taught. They thought that they were just above certain other people because of uh, 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 being born a Jew or being born into a certain race or in, into a certain background, uh, into a certain family. They, they had it all. They thought they had it all figured out. They thought they had God in a box, in a nutshell, and that they basically had a monopoly on God and on heaven, they just knew who was going to have favor with God and who wouldn't. And Jesus comes on the scene and he's saying, no, that's not how it is. God is going to open his arms up to any and everybody that will receive him. And I am the way to the Father. But there were people that were just struggling with what he had to say. They were struggling with with the truth and so they were always uh, questioning Jesus always trying to get him to say something incorrect try to get him to slip up in his words try to get him to contradict himself always messing with him and in this particular story we see that people come up they're questioning Jesus and they're saying okay uh, is it lawful to give tribute to Caesar should we pay taxes to this ruler and Jesus gets a uh, uh, smart uh, he he says hey get some money show me some money and so they present some money to him and he says whose image whose face is on this money whose title superscription is on this money what does it say who's on it and they say Caesar and he says hey if if this is Caesar stuff this is his it's his image on it. It's his title. This is what's due unto him. Give him what's due to him and give God what's due unto him. In other words, whatever belongs to someone, it's theirs. Just give it to them. Don't withhold it. I don't want what Caesar's. I know that's what you're trying to do. It's trying to make me say that it all belongs to me. But at the end of the day, I'm not jealous of Caesar. I'm not jealous of how much y'all love and adore him and stand up for him, even though he ain't around, even though he's just getting y'all's money. And I'm here actually trying to help you. You know, I'm trying to help you with more than just earthly material and money and possessions. I'm trying to help you see a bigger picture. I'm trying to help you into the kingdom of God but since y'all y'all want to show on the sly how much y'all uh, appreciate him and love him and respect him more than you do me I, I want you to know I'm not jealous I'm not concerned about y'all's love for him all I need y'all to know is whatever is his is his but whatever belongs to the Lord is the Lord's and I know who I am and what belongs to me I ain't jealous of no man's image on money so I emphasize that last message 
the whole part of where he's saying, you know, render unto Caesar the things which be his, but whatever is God's is God's. But in this sermon, what I want to emphasize is the part where he's talking about what's on that money, the face, the image, the superscription. And the reason why is this. When I did last sermon, as I was getting ready for it, even though I knew what that sermon needed to be about, something stood out to me and I knew that it needed to be another sermon. And it's this part about the money and what came to me about this money was the movie coming to America. And let me explain it real quick for those who uh, may not be too familiar, but if you do know it, let me jog your memory real quick. So Eddie Murphy, the comedian Eddie Murphy, he's playing in this movie, and he's playing an African prince. So here he is, he's in Africa, and, and, and he's living the life, what seems to be the life, but he, he, he knows he's missing something, he's lacking something, he's lacking true love in his life. Now his parents, they believe that he should be getting married. They believe that he's at a point in his life where he should be finding his queen. And so they set up these events where they bring these women in to come and they get to meet the prince. But the prince just isn't satisfied because he knows that a lot of these women are putting on a show for, for him and pretending to be somebody that they're not all because of the fact that he's a prince and he's famous and he has money and he's got some power and he's really going to have some power when he becomes king. And so that's not what he wants. He wants true love, which means he's going to have to find somebody who really wants him for him, not because of his title as prince. And so he's trying to explain that to his family. They don't get it. They think that he should take advantage of the fact that he's got all these women that are willing to fight for him. Uh, his homies are like, hey, you know, look at these fine women. Get you a good looking woman. So what if, <laughs> you know, so what if, you know, she really does or really doesn't love you? You can have anybody you want. Get somebody that nobody else can have. But that's not the mindset that the prince has. So the prince sits down with his closest buddy, his servant, and he's talking to him. And he's telling them, hey, listen, I got to find true love. But in order for me to do this, I got to get out of here. I got to get to somewhere where people don't know me, where it's like I'm starting from scratch and I can just blend in with others and get to know people and let people really get to know me for who I am, not knowing that I'm a prince so that I can find the one. So what they end up doing is they decide to leave Africa and come to America. They get here to America and <laughs> they start dressing like everybody else instead of dressing like royalty. They dress like everybody else. They get this run down cheap apartment. They start working at McDonald's. They, I think they call it some, something else in the movie, but it's basically McDonald's is what it is. So he's working at this fast food restaurant. I mean, he's just living a simple, basic life, just acting like he's not a prince. And he's nice to everybody, and he's smiling, and he's just cheesing. And people don't know why he's so happy, but if you were a prince, you'd be happy too. I guess you'd be smiling all the time too. But anyway, so, <laughs> so he's working. And eventually he meets this woman that, that, that he's very attracted to, he's very interested in, he's wanting to get to know her. So over time, she finally opens up to him, they start spending time together, and it's funny because throughout the movie, you see how people treat him different ways. You know, there are people that are rude towards the prince because they don't know he's a prince, but he's not mean back to them. He could stand up and be like, well, you know, I'm a prince over in Africa, so you ain't going to treat me like that. But he's not like that, you know, but, 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 you know, people treat him different ways, you know. So anyway, he's, he's, he's spending time with this woman that he likes. And eventually she invites him over to get to know her dad and this, that, and the other. Well, the woman's dad doesn't really care for the guy. Now, again, he, he doesn't know that this guy's a prince, but the woman's dad, he's just like, eh, you know, you should, you should be marrying somebody, uh, uh, and, and it shouldn't be him. <laughs> and so this plays out for a while. Well, the woman's dad ends up coming across some, some, uh, lost money. He, he picks up this money. It's African money. And he sees, uh, that, 
his daughter's, uh, the, the guy that his daughter is dating, his face, his image is on the money. And his title is on the money. And so now you see what, what I mean when I say that part stood out to me. The part about the image, the face being on the money and the superscription being on the money. It made me think of this part of the movie where the woman's dad sees this guy's face on this money, his, his name on this money. And all of a sudden he's thinking to himself, wait a minute, this guy that my daughter is dating this guy isn't just some random dude. He's pretending to be some random guy, but this guy is a prince. This guy is royalty. This guy is rich. This guy is a somebody from Africa. He's not just the average Joe. All of a sudden, when he sees this money and finds it, all of a sudden, now he wants to be nice. Now, now he wants him to come over for dinner and hang out. Now he wants his daughter to date him. Now he wants his daughter to consider uh, marrying this guy. All of a sudden, he just he he just he just flips the script. All of a sudden, you know, now he just thinks he's the best thing for his daughter. And the daughter can't understand why at first why he has this sudden change of heart. But when she finds out why, she's upset with her dad. Like really. You know, you didn't want to see him for who he was. You didn't want to check out his heart. You just saw his money. <laughs> you didn't want to look at the heart, but you saw the money with his face on it. And so now all of a sudden, you know, now you're interested in him. Now you really want to get to know him. Now you want to give him a fair chance. Now you want me to marry him. You know, and so, but that's what came to my mind. And I felt like I needed to share this for somebody. Again, this is for somebody, you know, you've been preparing, you've been waiting, you know, you've been seeking God on this, you've been praying, you've been praying for your spouse, you've been praying all kinds of things about them being ready and you being ready and this, that, and the other, and, and you're ready. Listen, <laughs> whoever this is for, I'm just letting you know to pay attention, pay attention, because, I, and I don't know, I don't know what's about to happen. I don't know what's going to happen, but God's going to bless you in a certain type of way that people are going to see. He's going to do something that people are going to see, and there are going to be people who at the last minute are going to have a bit of a change of heart about you, but for some of these folks, it's going to be real fake and real phony. There are going to be people who suddenly are going to want to date you, gonna suddenly want to uh, uh, be in a relationship with you again. Maybe it's somebody from your past that you tried to date or rejected you, or maybe you did date them, or y'all had something going on, and they just did you really wrong. They didn't want to apologize. They didn't want to see their fault in anything, but all of a sudden, now that something has changed, now all of a sudden, they're wanting to pick up where they last left off. They want to act like nothing bad happened. They, they act like everything's peachy, and they're rushing to try to uh, get the bag, so to speak they're they're rushing for you to put the ring on it so to speak w what do i mean maybe maybe they did you wrong but maybe maybe the thing that god does is maybe he blesses you with with uh an amazing job maybe he he sends somebody to help you and now uh, you've got some good finances going on maybe you've got that nice car maybe you've got the nice home maybe God does something where he he exposes your greatness maybe a talent or an ability comes out maybe you write a book maybe you, you you're a musician and now you're in a popular band uh, uh, maybe you have a, a a job where you're heavily involved in the community and now you're very popular in your town or you're popular in the state. Maybe you're on TV. I don't know what it is. It may not be any of it. It may be something totally different. I don't know, but there's something that God will do that will really put you on the map, so to speak, really bless you. And so now all of a sudden, now, all of, now that people see your greatness, listen, they see your face on something that's the thing that, that i really need to emphasize they see your face on something just like how here in scripture or in the movie coming to america they they see the guy's face on the money people see your face 
on something, maybe on a poster or a picture or a billboard somewhere. Maybe your image is all over social media now or all over TV. Your image is somewhere. Your name is somewhere. You're in lights now, so to speak. The spotlight is on you. And so now that your image, your superscription, so to speak, you're in the spotlight. Now people are coming. <clears throat> People are coming out of nowhere. People are coming out of the woodworks to want to get close to you suddenly, to get to know you, to date you. And some of these people, like I said, maybe people who in the past or right now are doing you so wrong. They're on the phone with their friends talking about you and laughing and making fun. Oh, they tried to ask me out. Do they know who I am? I can have anybody I want. And they think I want them. <laughs> right. Come on. They 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 getting their key keys in right now. Ay, key, 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 on the phone laughing like some monkeys. Ay, key, 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 right. They <laughs> they're having fun. It's funny and it's all fun and games. But it's like the saying goes, it's all fun and games until it's you. It's all funny until it happens to you. It's funny now. But 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 when the tables turn and, and then they get rejected, now it's the end of the world. It's funny for you to get turned down, but when, when, when you turn them down, no matter how nice you do it, now you're the bad guy. Now you're the one in the wrong. Come on. But that's what's going to have to happen. You're going to have to be honest about who people really are, how people really are. That doesn't mean you got to be mean back to them. That doesn't mean you got to uh, embarrass them the way they embarrass you or try to embarrass you in the past. All I'm saying is be honest. Be realistic. The one that you know is for you is for you. But what I was saying earlier in the sermon is you may be tempted to pick someone else that is not the one. What do I mean? Well, I'll give you an example. Maybe there's somebody who, maybe they're really handsome or really beautiful. In fact, people in the town may, may go on and on about how they're just the most beautiful or most handsome person in the town and anybody would 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 want to be with that person you know that person's just got it going on and 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 maybe maybe you tried to talk to that person or maybe y'all did have something going on i don't know but now all of a sudden that person because of what god is doing in your life that person now all of a sudden now you're good enough for them. A moment ago, you weren't good enough. And they didn't mind talking to you, but talking to this person, talking to that person, trying to juggle around different people, not really trying to get somebody because of their heart, but trying to get with somebody who they thought would uh, be beneficial to their image. Come on. They were trying to, to, to keep up with the Joneses, so to speak. They were trying to be all that and find somebody else who was all that, not looking on their heart, but looking on th on things that don't matter, like, you know, whether or not they're popular, whether or not they got X amount of money, whether or not they're driving the fancy car, you know, what's going to make them look cool. Somebody that's going to be their trophy, the trophy on their arm, the prize, being able to say, well, I got this person that's hard to get and I'm hard to get, so look at us. And so you may have this person want to now approach you. Maybe, maybe some people would look at you and say, well, you think that person's the one, but why have that person when you can have this person? This is the person that everybody would want to be with. But I'm telling you, regardless of the temptations to pick the wrong one, you better pick the right one. Pick the right one. Pick the one that you know God, listen, when God reveals the person, pick the one that you know God is showing you is the one, the one that's right for you, the one that's compatible for you, not only for you personally, but for you when it, when it comes down to what it is that God has for you to do, your destiny, the one that's for you is going to match your destiny, it's all going to come together, you know, Marrying somebody who has a totally different uh, avenue in life, a different, totally different destiny, uh, on a completely different path in life. You know, when you when you try to get married to them, it's just going to clash. Your life, your marriage is going to clash. Y'all are going to have two different things going on to the point where you may have to compromise and not go down the route God has for you to try to please this person. That's not it. You know, that's not it. So I'm simply saying to you, pay attention now. Listen, when people come up, 
that, that, you know, they didn't want you around their family. They didn't want you to be a part of their family. They didn't want you marrying their son, daughter, niece, nephew, whatever. And now all of a sudden, out of nowhere, suddenly, now they think you're just the, the, the best thing out there. And they just know so much about you. But a moment ago, they didn't want to get to know you. But now they swear they just know you and they know you're the best for their son, daughter, uh, aunt, uncle, whatever. Uh-oh. Uh-uh. No, they don't. No, they don't. They're wrong. They they don't know. And no, actually, they're right. You would be great for them, but they're, they're not the one. It's too late. <laughs> you Yeah, you would be good to them, but it's too late. Their time's up. They had their time. They played around. Time's up. And you don't have time to waste time with them anymore. <laughs> so... Listen, when you when these people come around, they're like the dad in, in the movie that, that they see your face on something, now here they come. First you were a nobody, now they see you as somebody, now they want you to be a part of the family. Mm. <laughs> you know, marry the one that you know is the one. When God reveals it, th that's it. That's what you go with. Don't don't let the temptations of trying to get this this trophy that you can show show off. No, 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 no. This ain't about proving something to people. This ain't about saying, oh, I can have this person and that person. I can have the one nobody else can get. I got the the one that's popular around. No, 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 no. Don't don't just nope nope. Just just let it go. Don't focus on that. Just don't even don't even go for it because it's a trap. It's just it's not going to end well. It's just not going to end well. It's not going to end well. That marriage is not going to end well. Probably end in divorce, but it's not going to end well. So with that said, that's that's really it. That's really it. That's really it, guys. Just wanted to nail that in the coffin, nip that in the bud. So I'll pray us out here. Heavenly Father, I thank you for another time to minister another word. Lord, I pray that those who have been patiently waiting for marriage, seeking for marriage, Lord, I pray that when you reveal the right one, that it is obvious, that it is clear that they are the right one. But Lord, also I pray that your people will pick the right one, that they will not be tempted to pick the wrong one, that they will not be tempted to pick uh, uh, not only the wrong one, but the counterfeits. Lord, I pray that people would not pick someone for things that don't matter that they don't try to pick the trophy, that they don't try to pick uh, what would be the prize in everyone else's eyes. But Lord, I pray, Lord, that your people would have wisdom, that they would have discernment, Lord, that they would use the good common sense that you gave them. <laughs> and Lord, that they would do what they know is best Lord, that they take you into consideration when it comes to their marriage. Lord, that you are the head of their marriage, the center point of their marriage, that Jesus is the foundation for their marriage. Lord, and I pray, Lord, that you will bring people together in unity for a purpose, for a cause. People that will impact the kingdom of God. And Lord, I give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Oh, and one more thing. I forgot to explain the title. Coming to a, a Merry Cuz. A Merry Cuz. The reason why I named it that is this right here, and it's kind of funny. Have you ever had a moment where in your life you met somebody and you found out they were like a relative, maybe a distant relative? And you didn't know it. Maybe it's a new person, but maybe it's somebody that you already met before. Or maybe you've known them for a while. And then all of a sudden you find out that y'all are related. I've had that happen before it happens. Okay. <laughs> the reason, the other reason why you might want to be careful and that you pick the right one. You might want to be careful because you might end up marrying somebody, marrying the wrong one. And then later you find out y'all are related and then it'd be awkward. Like y'all get married and then y'all have like. Or y'all are planning to get married and then y'all have some family event and people come together and y'all are thinking, well, wait a minute. The people that's sitting on this side, I'm related to them. What's going on? They're supposed to be sitting over here on my side uh, with, with my family members. And then y'all find out that y'all are all family. And then, 
then you done married your cuz. Get it? Uh, marry cuz. <laughs> America's uh, marry cuz. You don't want to marry your cousin. And I'm from Arkansas, and this is one of those states where, you know, that that happens. But, like, people, people will know up front that they're related to that person and they marry them anyway. So, you know, they call them kissing cousins. Anyway. All right. Get out of here, guys. Get out of here.